everyone, my name is Sarah and this is my channel, So Sarah Sewed. I'm really excited because today I am presenting my video. I am part of the official vlogger tour for the So Frugal 24 challenge. This is a challenge hosted by Ruan of the Yorkshire Sew Girl and Sam from Frugalissima, and it's been running for a few years. Now, as it's day 18, you might have heard all about this challenge already lots of times because there are so many of us presenting these videos. In which case, please feel free to go down to my description box and fast forward to the next chapter where I get into my plans. But otherwise, I'll just give you a very, very brief rundown. This is a challenge that's running all through March, and the idea is that you use fabric that you have in your stash to create a garment using a free pattern. Then on the 31st of March, we will be sharing and revealing our uh, finished garments on Instagram. And then anyone who has entered goes into a prize draw um, and there are a whole lot of amazing prizes to be won, all organized by Sam and Ruan. So it is a really, really fun challenge. It gets you thinking creatively and using what you already have in your stash. So I'm very excited to be part of it. So as I said, there are a whole lot of us getting involved in creating these videos. There are um, two or more vloggers a day making videos. So as well as mine today, Crystal from my social thread is also um, releasing her video. And yesterday you might have caught the Curly Sewista and Christine Sews A Lot, while tomorrow I'm looking forward to watching Dizzy Quilts and Sews and Sewn by Sarah, another Sarah. There are quite a few of us actually in the vlogging world. So onto my plans. I'm not someone who has a great big stash of fabrics. I generally try and buy things when I have a purpose for what they're going to become. So I don't have a large stash of, you know, big uh, lengths of fabric in my collection, but I do have a lot of remnants and large scraps because probably if anything, I tend to overbuy fabric when I go to buy it, or I buy what it says on the pattern description and they usually uh, tell you to get a bit more than you actually need. So I do have some large scraps of fabric, but as well as that, I also have a number of garments that I just don't wear. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on in my plans. I've looked through some of the things I don't wear or that don't fit me and I've never really worn, and I'm planning to cut them up and make things that hopefully I will wear. My first plan, I'll show you the garment that I have got and I'll talk about what I am thinking of making it into. So the first item that I rarely wear is this hinterland dress and it's made in a mid-weight cotton that I got from Nerida Hansen a few years ago and the designer is Brooke Gosson. I absolutely love this print and when I ordered it, I had wanted to get it on the cotton sateen um, and then they let me know they actually didn't have it and would I like it on a different substrate instead. So I've got the mid-weight cotton. And it's just not that comfortable to me. So I think it looks quite nice, um, but I just do not reach for it. And I think mainly because I'm not someone who wears a lot of short dresses or dresses that finish above my knee. And so I would want to wear it with um, layered with tights. And I find this one, it just creates too much friction. When I'm wearing tights, the whole thing just sort of gets um, caught. So I don't wear it. So this one, I thought could become a pair of sport shorts by Friday Pattern Company. This is a pattern I've never made, but I love the look of it. It's a pattern designed for woven fabrics and it's got cute little pockets, uh, an elasticized waistband and drawstring, and it's all bound with um, binding. And in the pictures, the binding is all using a contrast um, fabric, which I really love the look of. So I'm going to, I'm going to have plenty of fabric in this to be able to make a pair of shorts. And then I thought it would be fun to have a contrasting binding to go along with that. So I had a look through my stash and I, I am someone who buys a lot of prints. I don't buy a whole lot of solids. So it was a little tricky to find, but then I remembered I made my mum a shirt for Christmas and it's in a blue that I think will look really good with this. I think I've got just enough to be able to make some binding to work with this. I don't have a huge piece of this, but that's doubled over. Should be enough for binding. So let's have a look at them together. I reckon that's gonna look pretty good. So I'm excited about that. I've got the pattern printed and I might start cutting those out tonight. In the pattern that has the drawstring made from the same fabric as the binding, um, I might not have enough 
fabric for that and in which case I've got plenty of the dress fabric so I'll just make my um, drawstring out of that instead if I need to. The next item I never ever wear you might remember if you are a viewer of my channel um, and that is a jumpsuit a play suit that was just too short in the body um, and so therefore unwearable. Um, again this is from a Nerida Hansen fabric um, and again it's a mid-weight cotton. This cute little tulip print by Jennifer Buron, I believe. So this is a shorts and a short sleeve top. So the pieces are a bit smaller than the one in the dress, um, than the ones in the dress. So I'm a little bit more limited with what I can make with this one, but I do have a few patterns in mind that I thought I could um, use a variety of some of my patterns, cut them up and have a little bit of a patchwork effect. I've found quite a few photos on Instagram of people doing this with the peppermint peplum top. So I thought I might give that a go. So, so this is a free pattern from Peppermint Magazine. The Peppermint the Magazine patterns aren't free anymore, but the older ones are. There is still an option um, for them to be free. You can pay if you like, but there is still a, an option to, um, to get the pattern for free. This is a pattern created for Peppermint Magazine by In The Folds, and it's just a sleeveless little tank top with a peplum ruffle down the bottom. And I'll put in some of the inspiration pics that I found on Instagram. I think they're so, so cute. And I thought, well, maybe I could do something like that with this fabric. And then I found a couple of other fabrics that I thought could work. So this is just a maybe at the moment, but let me know what you think. I've also got this very bold um, cotton, again, from Nerida Hansen, <laughs> but it's in some similar colors. So I made, um, I made a valley top with this a couple of years ago. It's very bright, doesn't get a whole lot of wear, but when I do, it's very fun. So there's that, which I think goes quite well. And then I thought I could draw out some of the green. When I made myself a top with this fabric, I also made one of my nieces a little top as well. And that was lined with a, um, a little gingham. And I've still got a bit of that gingham left. So there's the third fabric. So I don't know, I thought maybe that could work. It might end up looking a bit silly, but they're all just things that are sitting in my scrap box or in my cupboard not being worn. So it is a chance to be a little bit creative and take some risks. So I might do that as one of my options too. One of the things I really like about this pattern is the interest at the neckline. So at the front, there is a round neckline and at the back, there is a V. Um, and I really love that little detail. Another pattern that I saw on Instagram being used as a basis for sort of some patchwork uh, was the Agostina box top by The Fabrics Store. Now, this is a pattern I actually have made before very early on in my sewing journey. Um, it's one of the first tops I ever made. Uh, I love the look of it online. Unfortunately, I didn't have a very good understanding of choosing appropriate fabrics for patterns at that point. So I made it with a very heavy linen, almost a canvas, um, and it did not work at all. I ended up cutting that up and turning it into an Ashton top. Um, but I think that if I used the right fabric for this top, it would be very, very wearable and very comfortable. So as the name implies, this is just a boxy top. It's got little cuffed sleeves and um, that's pretty much it. Again, I'm considering making this with a variety of fabrics that might work together. I'll show you some of my ideas. I've got a great big pile here of things that I've just gone through um, and uh, I'm considering, I'll show you. So unlike some people, my scraps and remnants are not organized in any kind of way at all. So I've been going through tubs and just trying to find things um, that might work together. And uh, yeah, it has encouraged me also to perhaps think about getting these into some kind of better system, uh, maybe, or they'll probably end up just going straight back into those tubs to be more realistic. So another top that I've got that I might chop up for this project is made from a dupes linen cotton. Now I love this fabric and I've made actually a jumpsuit with this, but I, you know, as I said before, I used to overbuy quite significantly when I was buying fabric. So I've made a Zadie jumpsuit in this fabric, but I had enough fabric left over to make a top. And I decided to make the Tudor blouse by Stitch Witch 
patterns, I believe. And I just, the fit is not right for me. I think I made the wrong size. I've never, I've, I think I've worn it once, but I didn't feel very comfortable in it. So I'm quite proud of lots of this, including the self-covered buttons that I made. But anyway, it's not getting worn, so this one can get the chop. And then I've got another Dupes Designs fabric that could work well with it. So I could combine the two, or there's also probably enough of this just to make the top by itself. So that's another option too. I've got a couple of fabrics that the remnants are so large that I really don't need to do the um, a patchwork design at all and really could just make a, uh, a top. So I've got a few options there. Um, I've even still got some more remnant of that of that spotty linen too. I'm thinking about it now. I mean, it could even be fun to make some kind of ruffled skirt with those, but I'm not sure I've got enough um, fabric for those. And I don't know of any patterns, but if you've got a suggestion, let me know. I've also got this rather large piece of tensile and linen. I think it's it's something like 90% tensile, 10% linen. So it's got a beautiful drape to it. This is a Miss Moresby fabric, again from Nerida Hansen. So many of my beautiful prints are from there. And I'd love to make this into something, but it is quite scrappy. And the difficulty with turning something like that into a patchwork design is that I'd need to find something that was a similar weight and drape. And I don't really have really anything that I feel would fit the bill for this one. So there's a potential to, if the pieces are big enough, if those, if that scrap is big enough, there's a potential that I could turn something like that also into the, um, the peplum top. Otherwise I might end up hanging on to it and, and sourcing some fabric that would work with it. So that might end up in my in my reveal as well. Something to look out for. I think I've got way too many plans. Um, last year I remember doing this too and had so many ideas and so many plans and I ended up getting one t-shirt made and that was it. So ambition is good though, isn't it? Another pattern that's really taken my fancy is by Tiana's Closet. Now this is a blog that I have never used before. I haven't tried any of her patterns before, but I really like the look of this little ruffle sleeve top. This is one that I wouldn't be um, patchworking or anything like that, but using one of my fabrics that I have enough to just go with the one um, one fabric for this top. It's a V-neck with a placket, and then it's got two different size ruffles on the shoulder, with a um, gathering at the back. So the fabric that I'm considering using for this one is one that I have left over from making my Laura dress last year. I made a true bias Laura dress but I've got a lot of this fabric left. So I do have a lot of options when it comes to this fabric. It's this one. It really is quite a large piece. So um, yeah, and that's folded over quite a few times here. So that's another option I could draw upon in my So Frugal adventure. But again, maybe I should save that for something big as well. That would be a that that also would make a really cool um, skirt. I think it's possible that I might even have enough of this one to make the peppermint the peppermint patterns wrap skirt. I've never made that before, but I do have a friend who absolutely loves it. So I'm not sure. Otherwise, that could be another one that ends up being um, a skirt. Because while I love my true bias Laura dress, it's quite fancy. It's not something I get to wear all that often. So. Being able to wear this fun print again in some other garment, I think would be really fun. I've also got this top that I made last year that I'd love to see made into another project. It's very small in terms of how much fabric is in it. But if I can find other fabrics to work with this one, I would like to. So this was the um, Helen's Closet Reynolds top. And I just didn't like the look of it on me. I don't like the neckline. Um, I didn't really like the fit. So, um, yeah, I'd love to find some other fabrics to use that one with. I do have a few dark linens that could work. I've got um, a, a navy blue. That could go okay. And I've got 
little scraps. That's like an emerald linen. I'm not sure that would work so well. Or that one. I've also got this, this one potential, not sure. So that one could end up cut up and made into something too. Probably most likely this one because there isn't a lot of fabric. It would have to be part of something like a um, either a boxy top, the Agostina top, or the peppermint ruffle top, but in a patchwork kind of style. And then the last pattern I thought I would share with you is the Orchard um, Top and Dress by Helen's Closet. This is one that I've had my eye on for a while. I downloaded it as soon as she released it a couple of years ago, um, but I haven't made it yet. And it is just a little shoestring, um, simple dress that um, is available in a number of different lengths. So full length dress, shorter dress, uh, and two different length tops. So I thought it could be nice to make just a nice little uh, linen top in that. But again, I'm not sure if I've got enough fabric. So this is a linen by Ellie Whitaker Studio. And I made myself a, a valley dress in this actually as well. So three of the fabrics I've shown you today were um, ended up being made into valleys. So I'm hoping that maybe there's enough of this for that top. It just depends because, yeah, some of the pieces are quite narrow. Uh, I'll have to have, you know, put it against the pattern pieces and see, but I'm not opposed to adding some extra seams in as well. Um, I'm not really sure how that one comes together, but I'd just love to use some of these favorite fabrics again and use them in a different way and also give new life to those pieces that I don't wear, but I really do love the fabrics. So those are my plans. We'll see what I end up making, how many of them I make. Um, before I go, I'll also tell you what I'm wearing today because this is also a free pattern. So all of my plans are for wovens this month, but the pattern I'm wearing right now is a t-shirt pattern by French Navy, and this is the Stellan tee. Um, this is one I wear all the time. It's just a really, really simple, easy to wear t-shirt. I'll show you the hemline too, because that's curved. Um, so that's kind of the point of difference of this t-shirt. The sleeves are quite long. Sometimes um, on other versions, I might roll them up, but I'm really comfortable in this one. And this one is in a dupes designs fabric as well back in the day where their jersey was quite thin. But it's a really hot day today when I'm filming this and uh, this is perfect and comfortable for the weather. So I hope you've enjoyed my plans. I hope you're getting involved in So Frugal. Let me know if you are. So I'm looking forward to making some kind of decision on where I'm going to start and seeing where it leads me. And I'm looking forward to revealing what I get up to on the 31st of March and seeing all of yours as well. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. And a huge thanks to Sam and Ruan for putting this challenge together. I know it's the favorite challenge of so many people here. I better get cracking and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.